All right, so let's talk about uh, jQuery. jQuery. All right, so uh, jQuery is uh, one of the most successful uh, JavaScript libraries out there. Um, I don't. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine a project, a JavaScript project, a browser JavaScript project that would not use uh, jQuery. Uh, so, so, um, so early on, when the when the web came out, I mean, there was only one one browser. Um, uh, but quickly, uh, uh, you know, each there were there were a lot of vendors who started uh, competing in this space, and uh, they quickly realized that um, you know. Um, you know, uh, controlling or dominating uh, here in the in the web space uh, was definitely uh, very important, right? To to, to have kind of it, it has become the window to everything, right? Um, uh, you know that whenever you access something, everything seems to be moving towards uh, towards uh, being uh, on, on the cloud, right? Having and being accessed anywhere from from the browser. Um, so 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 there was there was a lot of effort, uh, a lot of competition amongst different vendors to provide. Different versions of their of the uh, different different browsers, um, and, um, and 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 each one you know trying to uh, adhere to some of the standards that were were not there yet, but uh, we're, we're we're coming out um, uh, with uh, standards in HTML, standards in CSS, standards in JavaScript, uh, and uh, with varying degrees of uh, of success. Right, um, it was it's, it was it became so common that uh, that the JavaScript versions. Uh, between the between the vendors uh, and also within the vendors, right, were were widely different, right, and that that um, brought a huge challenge uh, from the developers' point of view, right. Uh, we we are here, you know, coding uh, JavaScript code that is going to be downloaded by a browser, but we can't control the browser that is going to download our JavaScript, right. It could be any browser, right, uh, and uh, with it could be from any vendor. Um, and um, and it could be it could have a, a varying degrees of uh, of uh, 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 latest JavaScript uh, engines or or very old JavaScript engines and and so so it was very hard to write code that would be uh, compatible with uh, uh, with a, 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 across vendors it, you know within a vendor you know different versions of JavaScript but also across the vendors right and um, and so so you had uh, uh, JavaScript developers writing tons of code that had all sorts of uh, you know switch cases, you know switch cases, and all sorts of if statement uh, checking to see if um, uh, if uh, if the server ver if the uh, vendor version was this, then do this, right? If it's a different version, then do that, right? It was it just became a nightmare to be able to write a code that was consistently um, adequate across different vendors, uh, across different versions of jQuery of, of JavaScript. Okay, uh, so so what jQuery uh, try, uh, 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 was trying to do is to solve this this problem, right? Instead of every every uh, um, uh, developer writing their own if statements and their own uh, uh, case switch cases to to deal in different ways uh, with different vendors, what jQuery did is says, hey, what if we standardize all that, right? What if we grab all those really cool rules that, that uh, we have been writing uh, for for several years, right? And we do an industry standard and say, let's write it. Let's write a library. Right? Let's write a library that um, abstracts the the browser, kind of what Java did um, across different uh, 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 across different different o operating systems, right? You you um, you you write your code to a a, a virtual machine, uh, and then that virtual machine that gets compiled uh, to the particular uh, infrastructure, right? Um, and and so so you, you write to, to, to some virtual uh, API right as opposed to writing to the the native API the native operating system so jQuery try uh, is, is, is that's what jQuery solves right so you we no longer um, you know if we're going to manipulate the DOM right we no longer try to manipulate it directly by right, using the the raw JavaScript library right instead uh, we use jQuery, and jQuery is going to do all the if else, if else, you know, switch case, right, and and do the right thing. Now it's going to figure out that that um, you do it this way in uh, in Safari, and you do it this other way in Chrome, and you do it yet another way in IE, or probably can't even do it in IE. Um, and and so it tries to, to support to support to support you, and and um, and and hide away all the idiosyncrasies of the of the different browsers. Okay. And, and this has really 
it made it so much easier for, for, for developers to be able to, to write code uh, that, is, um, that um, uh, is going to behave in a, in a, in a um, predictable way across different browsers. Everyone okay? All right. Uh, but jQuery doesn't, didn't stop there. Right? It went further than, th th than this. Right? And, and it started looking at, say, okay, well, how else can we expand on this idea? Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and as they, as they saw that uh, many, many, um, uh, a lot of the development, uh, of the, especially on the user interface part, was moving towards the browser, right? that uh, we wanted to make um, um, applications that uh, behave almost like the, the desktop applications. Right? Uh, folks were saying, well, you know, why can I do this on the desktop, but I can't do it on, my, on, 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 on web pages? Right? Why is it so restrictive? Uh, so, so they, they started writing uh, quite a few uh, libraries that um, added all sorts of uh, really nice uh, widgets right, that, uh, that um, we took for granted on the desktop, um, but were lacking on the, on the uh, uh, on browser. So for instance, you know, being able to, to um, uh, is this, uh, you know, that allow you to break, you know, all, all sorts of widgets that would allow you to have this, this kind of, um, you know, high-end, uh, interactions. Uh, autocomplete also was very common that, uh, uh, that you can you know, just start typing and it uh, provides a, uh, a, a, a several, several matchings uh, against something you can be searching for. Um, you know, date pickers, obviously. Uh, they, came, they came up with a date picker before HTML made that a standard. Right? HTML5 you know, came with its own date picker. Um, now, even though the, the date picker in uh, the, the standard date picker in, in HTML, it is not it doesn't the look and feel is not the same look and feel across all vendors, right? So if you if you use an input of type date, right, and you click on it, yes, you'll get a date picker, but it'll look different on uh, on Safari. It'll look completely different in Chrome. It'll look completely different in uh, in, uh, um, uh, in in Chrome and and and, and, and Firefox. Okay. It'll have the same functionality. It'll just it'll just have uh, its own little quirks. Uh, this date picker, if you use the jQuery date picker, it'll look exactly the same across all vendors. Right? Um, uh, uh, you have uh, progress bars. Uh, oops. Uh, you have progress bars. You have tooltips, uh, tabs. Right? That allows you to um, navigate across uh, several contents, uh, all using JavaScript. All right, so definitely, um, uh, it, it allowed an easy way for developers to add all these contents to uh, pages. But it went even further, right? It went even further and says, well, these are specific widgets that you can build, but you can build your own widgets, right? You can build your own widgets. We're going to give you a couple of interactions that would allow you to uh, create your own, right? Fairly complex behaviors. So not only widgets, but behaviors, right? Uh, of, of that that are fairly common, right? That, for instance, being able to very easily uh, allow you to drag things around on the page, right? Uh, that um, um, that uh, would allow you to uh, perhaps snap uh, to a grid, right? So that's uh, that's a, that's a fairly common behavior that you find in desktops, right? You can define your own uh, uh, snap behavior. Uh, this one, if you drag it, it snaps to something else, right? So that you can. Um, you know, as you move it, it just stick, sticks to a particular edge, right? To the outer edge, for instance. Um, this one uh, snaps only to the big edge, or to, the, to, the, to the edge on either side, right? Anywhere on each one of the edges, to any one of the edge of this, of this top, top div. Uh, so there's quite a few things that, uh, that, that behaviors that you just configure it and it just works. It's really nice. Um, other ones is a... Uh, um, uh, sortable is also a very, very, a very uh, popular one that allows you to have you know several several elements that uh, are listed one after another, and it allows you to just drag them around and just reposition them wherever they want. And guess what we're going to be using? We're going to be using this behavior, right, uh, to um, uh, to allow being able to just drag around uh, widgets and, and reposition them. Okay, right. Uh, and, uh, and they have several examples here that uh, allow you to have two, two lists that allow you to maybe drag from one and position it and add it to someone else, right? Um, uh, or display it as a grid and just move it around and just pushes everything to the side so that you can reposition it um, 
uh, somewhere else on the page, right? Uh, so definitely, this could, this could we could we could extend our widgets that we currently have, right, with these kinds of behaviors, and would allow us to just move content around. Uh, obviously, uh, up to this point, uh, uh, um, it would not be it would not be saved, right? None of these modifications that you do to the page will be saved until you notify the server, right, and make it permanent, right? Up to this point, all this is happening on the client side, right? None of this is permanent. If you refresh the page, obviously, it refreshes and it goes back to its original state, right? So it needs server side to be able to make this uh, permanent. Uh, other things here, you have some several cool, really cool examples that allow you to you know, collapse a different piece of content, drag them around uh, uh, like in a, in a window system, right? Um, and it's uh, and and the, all all these examples are fully documented um, in the uh, view source. And you can see exactly how they accomplished it, and it's it's a surprisingly easy, right? Yes. Yep. So, what if the browser changes and jQuery is still not updated to reflect these changes? So, what happens is that you, you're, you're using jQuery and you write your source code uh, to use the jQuery libraries, right? Uh, and so, your, uh, the jQuery library and your source code get downloaded to one browser or another browser or a different browser. Uh, and, and your code is always talking to jQuery regardless of what browser it's running to, right? And it's, it is jQuery who, uh, running on this browser, it'll do uh, something. Um, and in this browser, it'll do something else. But the behavior will be the same. That's what I'm saying. Right. How, how do we know that the browser has, doesn't change the mode somehow? Well, that's the point, right? That's what jQuery does. It, it, uh, it, it, it makes you forget the fact that the browser can change. Yes. Uh, now, there's, there's uh, uh, obviously uh, it will support uh, from a, uh, a set of browsers and, and 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 anything that's before a particular set of browsers. So it supports you know uh, up until you know IE nine and, and 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 Chrome whatever these these versions and anything before that, right? Any any other browsers that come after that, uh, jQuery is releasing new versions that support yet a bigger portion of a you know, bigger family of browsers uh, up until. Uh, the latest version uh, it says, you know what? I'm not going to start. I'm not going to even um, support these really, really old browsers. Only the ones between, you know, between these versions and these versions, right? Uh, because these are so old that uh, they're you know, no, no one else is using those anymore, right? And we're not going to even support it. Right? So, so you have to choose which version of jQuery, uh, depending on the targeting family of browsers that you want to uh, that you want to support. It's not compiling, right? This is all. Uh, uh, live, right? It's it's not compiling to the, the for a specific browser, right? It it just have, has all these uh, really smart uh, if else uh, that that uh, that allow you to uh, to write without having to deal with the idiosyncrasies of a browser. Okay. All right, everybody, everybody okay? Everybody still with me? All right. All right, so let's uh, let's start playing around with uh, with with, uh, with jQuery. Uh, 